building a healthy economic relationship requires a level playing field for American workers and firms and open and direct communication on areas where we disagree. And this includes the issue of China's industrial overcapacity, which the United States and other countries are concerned can cause global spillovers. IS Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in China yesterday with more talking points, saying that the U.S. is concerned with China's industrial overcapacity. Later this morning, Yellen will speak at a business roundtable, followed by a bilateral meeting with government officials. Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty joined this program earlier in the week. He laid it all out. He warned about the danger of China's electric vehicle push. Watch this. There's a new product that's been introduced from China. A Chinese EV car maker has put out a product looking much like a Porsche for a price point of about $30,000. Tesla's a price Porsche dropped. A Porsche or a Tesla? Uh, uh, it looks like a Porsche to compete against Tesla, and Tesla's price dropped 8.5% yesterday on the markets. Yeah. There's a deeper concern about the Chinese EVs as well. These EVs have a tremendous amount of information gathering equipment. If there's a concern here in America that that information could be gathered and in turn sent back to China. Wow, serious threats here. Joining me right now is Arkansas Congressman French Hill. He is the vice chairman of the House Financial Services Committee and a member of the House Foreign Affairs and Intelligence Committees. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being with us. You bet, Maria. Thanks for having me. So what is your reaction to what you just heard from Senator Haggerty? It, 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 it corresponds exactly with former DNI John Ratcliffe has told me for years that China's strategy is very simple. Rob, replicate, replace. That's it. OK, rob uh, intellectual property, uh, replicate that intellectual property the way they're doing with this new car, and then replace American companies with the Chinese uh, company. Your, re your reaction? Well, I agree with that philosophy. We've seen these intellectual property thefts going back to the 1990s, uh, going back to videotapes. So it certainly doesn't surprise me that they're doing that uh, in the electric vehicle area. Secretary Yellen's agenda should be, look, first, stop dumping goods in Europe and the United States. We don't want to buy any more things made with Uyghur labor or subsidies. Uh, the Biden administration's made this worse by their insistence and mandates in and around EV, battery, and solar uh, issues without letting the free market work. And so you're actually empowering the Chinese through Biden policies that are climate-related. And, and what Secretary, uh, uh, Senator Haggerty mentions is the same reason why we banned TikTok. It's the gathering of data through uh, the app, in the case of TikTok, rather than a BYD uh, electric vehicle. And that's the concern, because China's using that data to gather uh, the way Americans live and work, and they can use that for disinformation uh, at any time in the future or uh, have information and, and methodologies to disable American systems. Just this week, Microsoft said that they had discovered uh, mass amounts of AI use for disinformation in the United States and in Taiwan uh, that they picked up through their systems. And this is just another example of China trying to gather data on Americans. Right. And, and we all know this at this point, right? I mean, now we've seen what the CCP is trying to do, overtaking the United States, and yet President Biden fails to get tough with Xi Jinping at all. We've got 20,000-plus Chinese nationals coming through the open border just since October, 201 day last week. Okay, why? They can't just pick up and leave China. Why are they, President Biden, we have no evidence that he brought that up. Uh, to Xi Jinping the other day when they were on the phone, and yet he, the White House went nuts telling us how tough he was on Bibi Netanyahu. Did you want to say something? Well, I just was going to say, this is why Secretary Yellen, in addition to uh, this dumping comment I made, reshoring is real. And so the right. Chinese need to recognize, and she made this point, their export economy is not going to drive their numbers anymore. They have uh, a tremendous unemployment. They have a large percentage of their youth uh, not employed. They don't have a social safety net. They have a real estate market collapse, a financial collapse. Xi Jinping is putting entrepreneurs in prison, shutting down the press. Okay. So this is no way to build a domestic economy uh, and employ people. I think he's putting his own country at risk with his terrible economic policies while he threatens uh, the world. And it's going to backfire on the Chinese economy. Right.
Well, maybe, but right now our businesses are vulnerable because of all of this. And if he would get a little tough on Xi Jinping, maybe he would show us that he cares about this stuff. But he ignores China while hammering Israel. The president spoke with Israeli right, Prime is, Minister Benjamin is. Netanyahu yesterday. And apparently, according to the White House, he was real tough, warning that U.S. policy toward Israel could change if the IDF does not do more to improve the humanitarian situation in Gaza. A White House readout of the call shows Biden told Bibi Netanyahu the strikes on humanitarian workers and the overall humanitarian situation are unacceptable. Biden called for an immediate ceasefire, Congressman, uh, and, and, and no comments whatsoever about the fact that it's Hamas who started this, and Hamas is still refusing to release any hostages. No wonder that in this week's New York primary election, almost 40,000 Democrats reportedly voted blank. To protest Biden's stance on Israel's war, Congressman. Your thoughts on all of that? Well, Biden's got it wrong. The reason people are suffering in Gaza is because of Hamas. The reason there's a war in the region is because of Hamas, backed by Iran. And Bill Burns, our CIA director, is headed back there this week. If we want a resolution here, Hamas needs to free the hostages and surrender. Uh, that's what they need to do so that we can move on. Nothing's more dangerous than urban warfare. Israel's being as careful as they can under the conditions. But Hamas uses public buildings, hospitals, their tunnel system as a malicious way to continue the attacks on Israel while impoverishing and endangering the people of Gaza, just like they have for their 20 years of leadership. Everyone knows this. Yeah. And that's why Burns and Biden must, in my view, uh, make the uh, Hamas terrorists understand. Give us the hostages, let us have humanitarian end, and surrender. We want to yeah. end this. Real quick before you go, Congressman, I know legislation is going to be competing with regulation when you all get back, as the Biden regulatory agencies have a soft deadline of Memorial Day to codify regulations before getting into, I don't know, potential clawback scenarios from the Congressional Review Act. That could come into play. He's trying to ensure that no uh, government officials can be fired if Trump wins the election, Congressman. You want to say anything about all these uh, green ideas and uh, climate change agenda rules that have been put into business uh, from the Biden administration? Every House committee run by a solid Republican conservative chairman is coming up with their strategy to defeat uh, this. Uh, end of the administration strategy of Biden, both on proposing new rules. We're going to use the Congressional Review Act, trying to jam employees in without uh, the advice and consent of the Senate. The Senate will be ready to push back. We're going to take that. We're going to expand our majority in the House this fall. We're going to take the Senate back and we're going to put an end uh, to the uh, regulatory agenda that's been so destructive of economic growth uh, in this Congress. All right. We'll be watching your work, sir. Thanks very much, Congressman French Hill, joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back.